I'll tell you what, we love our Tuesdays. That means Peter Mullen joins us. Peter, he's, he's just starting to wreck the equipment already. What are you doing? Peter, pay attention. Pay I'm, attention. Just, I'm just getting it's myself your set up, Mark. Well, you've been in here for 20 minutes. You've just been talking and not getting ready to go. Look, this week we're going to do something a little controversial, some may say. Uh, we're going to have a look at the food star rating, the health star rating, but you've got some thoughts on why we should sort of abandon it, move away from it. Well, just the, just the way it's been set up initially. Like, it's supposedly under review, but it definitely could do with a bit of a, a revamp, okay. particularly looking at, you know, chronic health in Australia. So, yeah, I thought it'd be a good topic to talk about, particularly coming up um, to Christmas. I guess just for the fact that people are going to be eating more packaged and processed foods, possibly. Okay. And maybe Melbourne Cup. You know, you might be at a Melbourne Cup party listening to the radio now thinking about some something you're going to eat. So you might want to know all about this. I'm pretty sure if you're at a Melbourne Cup party at the moment, you don't care what you're eating or drinking for today, Peter. Maybe something <laughs> they can start on tomorrow. Been around for about three years or so, and something I wasn't aware of, about 7,000 products on this rating, on the star rating of you know one to five stars, but you're not all that convinced that it's the way to go what's what's the problem with it well um so so it's a, a great concept is that the government you know is promoting this concept of actually that foods need to be uh, marked up as to how healthy they are um the challenges i've got and it is it's voluntary i think there was a five-year period for people to get their foods um up tested and up to date but the challenge is that a lot of the things or the, the there's about five or five or so different categories they look at to describe um, whether a food's going to get a how many stars so they look at the sodium content they look at the sugar content the fiber content the protein and also if it contains um, you know vegetable or plant matter as well obviously gives it a higher star rating so it's not really looking at it as if it's a whole food it's looking at individual um, components and then putting it through a complex um, calculation and then coming up with a star rating so why is it that looking at those individual things are necessarily not the best thing because yep salt sugar protein or all that sort of stuff you would think that would be a good way to determine whether we a food is healthy for us or not well it's it's one of those things that's a bit skewed like there's a, a break for example why is it that a breakfast cereal that's full of sugar um given something like four and a half stars while playing greek yogurt is given just one and a half star. Well, that's a question I would like an answer to. So how, it's not, how, how do we arrive at that? Because uh, uh, even Blind Freddy can see that's a bit skewed. Well, so the fat content, so the saturated fat in the Greek yogurt will give it a lower score straight away, even though we say that you know some saturated fats are actually okay or good for us. Um, the maybe the the salt con the sodium content in the cereals less so it's based on this calculation or this algorithm that they use determines whether a star's you know a, a food's going to be classed as more so they're more operating healthy. on a bit of give and take yeah it might have a lot of sugar but hey these other uh, in inverted commas nasties are down low so that one way sort of balance Ab the other absolutely out. so it's not really looking at um, whether a food's healthy for us or not like it's really looking at these criteria and you know it's not it's not sort of saying like from my my point of view like if a food's a packaged food if it's a man-made packaged food you know we should have minimal amount of that in our diet anyway not give it a listing as a as a as a, a healthy product to include in our diet i guess the further away from something being something that you naturally find out there the further away from that we get the less healthy we potentially are anyway yeah, absolutely. And that kind of makes more sense. Like we're trying to encourage, you know, from a health point of view, it makes more sense to eat um, lots of whole foods, fresh fruit and vegetables, you know, and I, I'm a big believer that our, our diet basically should be as plant based as possible, you know, with good quality animal proteins, um, nuts and seeds, good quality fats and oils, you know, good quality compre or complex whole grain cereals and grains. As soon as we start to manufacture a product or put it in, you know, plastic containers or cereal packets, you're starting to, you know, you're drawing at straws as far as I'm concerned, trying to convince people that like a breakfast cereal in a plastic bag is actually a four and a half or a five star rated health food. Do you think we get carried away a little bit on on these types of programs or it's got a high rating so therefore we just will ignore anything else and, and go for it? Or do you think that people don't really pay much attention to these things uh, anyway? Look, no, I think I think there's probably six of one, half a dozen of the other. I think certainly people are aware of the Health Star rating. Like it's a it's a government thing or an incentive that's been out for quite a while. But um it's 
it's but i think they're also a lot more conscious of the fact that packaged and processed food is not necessarily the way we want to be going mm. you know really anyway and just even the the people involved in putting the the star rating together like you know it's suspected that they're you know industry industry leaders in the food in in the food production um by, by put forward by the companies that are wanting these high star ratings to try and it's just another way i guess of trying to market their product that you know is not really i don't think honest and above board so you're feeling that it could be more of a more so a marketing tool than a health guideline yes mm. that's exactly the point i guess and and again i'm not trying to offend anyone but this is just my opinion about it but we can get too caught up it's like the whole um additives and preservatives debate you know we can do all the research and find out what all the numbers are in foods but you know our concept is we'll just don't eat anything that's in a packet that has a number on it you don't necessarily need to know what the number is. So I think the health star rating is a bit the same. Is if we're eating whole food prepared, and in and fair enough, if you want to if you want to make healthy cakes or healthy slices or healthy biscuits, do it all from scratch using whole ingredients, you know, whole eggs, whole full fat milk or full fat milk alternatives, like make it using the food in its whole form. I believe is still going to be a lot healthier than you know having something that's in a packaged and and Peter the health star rating is what we're talking about today. Uh, the government has announced, haven't they, this five year review into the rating system uh, as sort of a tool to try and help combat obesity. How many of us are actually into the overweight obese categories? Well, it's almost estimated that almost two thirds of Australians being overweight or obese, and this was in two thousand and fourteen, two thousand and fifteen. So I would imagine it would, would be fairly static numbers now. Startling yeah. fact, isn't it? You know that that almost two thirds of Australians being overweight, and you know the figures are rising with kids as well. So I think I think um you know government derived health initiatives are fantastic. I loved um the you know the norm. What was that? that oh, life be in it. Life be in it. Life be in it. I, th- yeah. I thought that was a great concept. You know, just about getting out and about, and that sort of lost its you know lost that lost its place a little bit, hasn't it? Like this whole idea of you know well, exercise well, and movement and well i think the problem was norm eventually got off the couch and went out so when they went back to film more there was nothing to film <laughs> he, he was seen last he, last running in marathons probably he took life he took control of his life and he's now a thin person so he's okay yeah um, well so so current, given the current obesity epi- epidemic you know that hopefully the government's going to be starting to look more seriously at ways to help um and given that excess weight's a major risk factor for cardiovascular disease type 2 diabetes um cancer um you know like it, it really is that that's our major health health initiative i believe is helping the people to have a better understanding about um food and carbohydrate content and i'd like to see a system based more around that you know looking at not necessarily just low carb where or or you know where they take the carbs out but having more of a whole food approach whole food and exercise and you know grading your diet more around those sorts of figures so would that be so would that be a that would really be an entire change to how we look at this or from a governmental level how they look at this would do you think there would be a much appetite industry-wide industry-wise to make that's, this move no that's the challenge you know when they were talking about bringing in the sugar tax you know, like one of the first things I recommend to all my mums of young kids is to get them off soft drinks. Like they're just such an unnecessary, they're not even a food item. You know, like little, little, you know, kids, kids will, I'll say to kids, you know, well, what do, you know, when I, when I say, you know, you can't have soft drink and you shouldn't drink commercial juice and, you know, milk's really a food, it's not a drink. They say, well, what do the, what do the kids drink? And I say, well, what do, you know, animals in the wild drink basically, and they say, "Well, water." And I say, "Well, that's what little kids should be drinking is just water." And all of a sudden, Peter is labelled as the no fun guy. <laughs> I love how you were looking at looking straight at me with this no soft drink thing, Peter. You you weren't talking. Oh, you were look, talking to me. It's such a big thing, and it, and it's it's so insidious the way that these foods have just sort of crept into our environment. You know, when we were kids, if you you had a soft drink maybe on your birthday. And that was lemonade. Like you didn't have it every every night at the dinner table, or you know when you kind of got home from school. And those little juice poppers and things—they're all just concentrated sugar and water as well. Like they don't have. It's not the same as making fresh juice. So probably so, not winning many fans out there. In no, the, I um, wouldn't imagine so, Peter. Processed food department, am I? No, no. All those who love yeah you know, poppers and 
soft drinks and all that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, so I guess we, it all comes back to we got to th- if you're removing those things, we need to put some other things in. So wh- what's the best way to go about that? Well, eating more real food, you know, and foods as close to nature as possible. You know, and we've had Carly on here before talking about what she feed her kids. But, you know, we never we never stop influencing our kids. So even if you're a grandparent out there listening, if your grandkids come over and they see you, you know, cutting up a fruit, some fruit for afternoon tea and making a fruit platter for the grandkids when they come and, you know, getting ice out and putting some or water and lemon juice and a bit of fresh lime or something, you know, we can still influence our kids no matter what age we are. And, you know, the more we can do to eat, eat healthier that's got to rub off on our kids because diet you know those conditions we just talked about um cardiovascular disease type 2 diabetes um even some types of cancer you know the world health organizations are are calling them dietary and lifestyle diseases Mm -hmm. do you know what i mean it's serious stuff when you know we're spending billions of dollars every year on health care after the fact of if we get more people poor, tuned in the right way poor at the choices, start. Poor choices in the first place. And that's what I think the government should be getting around, is not just this sort of um, a little bit uh, biased and out-of-balance health star rating. Um, so for another example is, you know, why is regular milk given four stars, while flavoured milks like, um, I can't mention the brand names here, but get four and a half stars. So those oh, flavoured milks... But that's got, that's got even more processed processed stuff sugar flavors etc so they don't even take into consideration whether something's got additives or preservatives these health stars it's all based on you know low sodium higher higher fiber or maybe some fiber sugar lower sugar but you know it doesn't take into consideration additives and preservatives so you can be giving your kids lollies that are, have a, a good good health star rating, but they've got additives and preservatives, so it's not it's not really a health rating. And I just very quickly as well, Peter, perhaps those learning to read the nutritional labels actually get an understanding of how they work. Uh, yeah, look, that I always recommend um, patients like if you're going to buy packaged and processed foods, which we all will have a certain amount of, hopefully a small amount of packaged and processed foods in our diet, is learning to le- le- read the labels on the the back of the containers. Um, you know, as we said before, eating more real food as close to nature as possible, um, avoiding you know foods that have high high amounts of sugar and um, additives and preservatives, um, and learn to read the nutritional labels. That's the only place you'll find the truth about what a product really contains and the ingredient list. You know, there's still that concept that if you read the ingredients and sugar is the first or the second ingredient on the contain on move the on <laughs> packet you know that um yeah you need to move on or it'll be a very very sweet dessert item that's it'll for be sure. very yes I mean, yeah. uh, wrapping it up today the health star rating peter he does not like it you just you just it's got to go for you hasn't it oh look i just think it can be um more thought more thoroughly thought out you mm. know as i was saying I, I did like the the old norm life being it campaign i think something could be done you know, far more effectively than, than this system, which is really not determining the health of a product as oh. far as I'm concerned. Bring back Norm. <laughs> Bring back Norm. Maybe not a cartoon version. Maybe we can have an actual person play. Yeah, maybe that's a good norm. idea. Yeah. Maybe that's a good idea. And what's their journey as they become less Norm-like? Look, a few quick tips uh, for those wanting to make some changes uh, in the pantry, in the fridge, yeah, in the cupboard. Look, if, if you are in the supermarket and you're finding yourself um, buying some packaged and processed foods, and as I said, you know, it's not unusual for some of our food to come from these sorts of sources um have a good have a good practice like start to read what's on the back of the packets you know always try and get something that doesn't have any extra numbers in it you know, so not the front additives. where you've got the nice pretty picture of a farm or sunshine uh, or the word natural no, appearing no 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 <laughs> get get past the labeling the, the name on the front and actually look at what's what's in the product um and, you know, basically as close to nature as possible. Would it be fair to say that farmers markets and smaller localised providers would be a good place to go as well? Yeah, well, that's that's the theory, isn't it? Like that we want to stick to more stuff as close to nature as possible. If you go to the supermarkets, the idea is stick to the outside because that's where the fresh produce usually is. That's yeah. the fruit and the be- veg and the, the meat and the... I've heard that so many times. You sort of do the ring around the outside and just and leave everything clear. else. Yeah. Except for toilet paper. You've got to go down that <laughs> aisle. <old. laughs> With well, certain things may be essential. Yeah. Um, when you're shopping, you know, have a list and stick to it. So, and, you know, some of my patients will actually do up meal plans for the week ahead. So they actually know, 
you know, it saves them money and also you know exactly what you need to get when you go to do your grocery shopping. So you're not going to be tempted by those packaged And I believe foods. you may also be a fan of, of trying to do your shopping online to sort of keep the temptations away. Look, uh, for a lot of my young mums, you know, shopping online, once you work out like your basic grocery requirements you can shop quite easily online and then oh. still get your box of you know organic fruit and veg delivered once a week i think the thing if you're doing that as well you're actually going to see the monetary dollar amount go up as well so when you just got the shopping trolley i'll throw that in throw one of those yeah and then it's the, a big surprise at the end but there's not many the, of us the total comes there's not many of us that want to do that walk of shame and sort of take things out so oh you know unless you really have to but if you're doing it online are you looking at thinking oh i've spent a hundred dollars i I don't want to spend much more, so I'll Keeps take out more. the nasties. And, and food is expensive. Like, it's probably one of our most expensive um, living items, apart from electricity these days. But cost of food is quite, you know, quite a big part of our budget. So Can't live without it. Now, Peter, you'll be, you and your team are out and about for November. Uh, what about the Gaps talk with Kate Williams? Only a couple of seats left, Only I believe. a couple of seats for anyone that wants to know more about the Gaps diet. Um, as I've said before, GAPS is sort of a really serious dietary approach for um, kids with learning and behavioural issues, um, and, but also adults with severe auto, or autoimmune conditions as well. And uh, for uh, David Marsden's got his talk coming up, 21th, 21th, that's not a word. Peter, can you just read this? 20, I've, I've 21th of November. Of Yep. <laughs> so 21st of November, Natural Remedies for a Healthy Prostate. And just limited seating available at that at this stage? Absolutely. And on the 28th of November, I'll be doing our last talk for the year, Managing Stress and Adrenal Fatigue Naturally. I think that's a good time for that because most of us are stressed I at Christmas so. time. I think so. It's six weeks. I think it's six. We've got six weeks of work left. So seven weeks today will be Boxing Day. Let's be honest, once we get past Melbourne Cup Day, it's officially Christmas, isn't it? Oh, I'm with you. I, every year I say that once we've had Melbourne Cup, like Christmas is the next event. So You stole that line off me. But look, you have, bought, close. you have brought in a few little uh, surprises uh, to be a part of our Christmas raffle at 20 RFM, haven't you? Can I have a look at one of those prizes? Yeah, absolutely. While well, you take us through what there is. Some nice, is there some muesli in there? So what we've got, we've got three good health packs and um, each pack contains an initial consultation um, so what a special one of our special tests that we do, some initial health care testing, um, including iridology and a 45 minute results visit. So basically, it's the first three appointments in someone coming in to see us, an initial testing and a result. And we've also thrown in a bag of muesli as well. So valued at over four hundred. Bit of stress eating while you wait for the results. Absolutely. Peter. <laughs> so valued at over four hundred each, and we're we're we've donated those to the triple. To the um, the two new RFM Christmas two raffle. <laughs> Christmas raffle. Well, there are at least three prizes, so there's there's more than one. Peter, thank you so much for that. We uh, we look forward to catching up with you next week on the radio. Um, next week, in fact, it will be the the Gaps Diet. Yeah, I thought we'd talk a bit more about the Gaps Diet. And if anyone's got any particular questions about the Gaps Diet or wanting to know how it might be able to help them, then um, that would be a good time to call in. Excellent. Well, that's uh, Health and Wellbeing wrapped up this week with Peter Mullen. Uh, you can catch a podcast a little later today and uh, maybe even have a look at that lovely muesli and the consultations as well, Peter. It looks pretty good. Thank you for sharing that for our Christmas raffle. Thank you, Mark.